Welcome to our Conversations with Calvin, We the Species. Uh, I'm wearing a, a, a mask. Uh, uh, this is the N95 mask, uh, and I'm going to take it off because I know I don't need it. Uh, Garish is kind of laughing over there. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't need it, but uh, it's got a great history. I, I used to wear this when I did paranormal investigations in an abandoned psychiatric hospital, uh, protecting myself from ghosts and asbestos and mold. But since uh, I'm, I'm here home, um, I'm not going to do it. So um, mask is off. And, and without further ado, uh, we could, Girish and I were just chatting, uh, Girish Haranath, uh, an aging biologist. You've got to be careful how you say that, because mm. it sounds like you're getting older. <laughs> uh, but you you study aging and, and we could talk for hours and hours this is just the beginning we're going to come back he's going to come back and we're going to redo different topics but i, I want to introduce girish haranath um and why don't you take the the mic and do a little bio and contact and stuff and then we'll jump into our thing okay thanks so much calvin for okay that wonderful introduction so uh, so my contact information, uh, it's harinatg at gmail.com, H-A-R-I-N-A-T-G at gmail.com. And a little bio about myself. So I, I did my undergrad at Rutgers University, uh, majored in cell biology and neuroscience, minored in nutrition. And it's really at Rutgers during this undergrad experience that I cultivated my passion for all things science, biology, and uh, physiology. Uh, after soon after I graduated, I was lucky enough to to get a job at Memorial Sloan Kettering, where I did cancer research, specifically studying a form of brain tumor called glioblastoma multiform, and we would develop personalized therapeutics uh, to target these diseases on an individual level. Excuse me. Uh, and after Sloan Kettering, I spent three years there and moved on to Rutgers uh, University, where I work currently at the Department of Molecular Biology and Biochemistry, studying, as you said, Calvin, the fundamentals of aging biology. And what this really means is biology, the aging biology on a cellular level, on the level of an individual cell, because this is really the foundation of where aging arises and eventually leads to the systemic organism aging. Uh, and Rutgers was also very unique for me because I got to do my, uh, actually quite recently graduated from my Master of Business and Science uh, course, uh, and I got my degree in biotechnology and genomics. And this was a really valuable experience for me uh, because the Master of Business Science degree was really a cross-disciplinary approach which merged the business and science worlds together and really highlighted the value in uh, getting out of the lab rat role and taking our academic learning and being able to communicate what we learned in lab to the general public and really instantiating the values of what we learned in lab uh, into the real world. Uh, so it was an amazing experience and that's a little bio. Okay, so uh, what is aging? Uh, as scientists uh, in the field currently understand, what is aging? Yeah, so this is the, the million dollar question, um, and it really is the message that I'm trying to spread. Um, and it's this idea that, we're, that we've stumbled upon uh, recently, quite recently, that aging is not some inevitable process of degeneration and decay, but rather a gradual disease process that gives rise to many of the chronic illnesses that you know, 70 percent of the global population is dying from diseases like cardiovascular disease, autoimmune disorders, type 2 diabetes, and dementia. And at its foundation, aging is really this process of damage accumulation that occurs over time. When we're younger, we're able to deal with that damage. Our innate quality control systems are able to clear away that damage before it turns into pathology. But as we grow older, as we um, live longer on this earth, encounter more stressors, uh, our quality control systems begin to fail. And this is what leads to damage accumulation and eventually uh, cellular dysfunction and what we call the hallmarks of aging, which are really the, the cellular causes of aging that manifest on an organismal level. Um, and really uh, what we're finding out in the, in the realm of geroscience, which is the science of aging, is that these damages that occur gradually and insidiously can be identified, they can be tracked, and they can be cleared away before pathology arises. And that's really wow. the healthcare approach rather than a disease wow. care approach. Yeah. Wow. So that's like unlimited. Um, Segwaying, what, what influences uh, aging, the rate at which somebody ages? I, and I always use myself, I like to use myself as a poster boy, 
because uh, you know I'm approaching three quarters of a century, and and I think uh, I'm I'm as sharp as I ever was. But what 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 does uh, uh, influence rates of aging? Yeah, this insight that you just had. I mean, it brings up an important distinction. There's a chronological age, which is the number of years we live on Earth, the number of candles on your birthday cake. And then there's biological age, which really reflects the health and functioning of our tissues, the various tissues of our body. And science is telling us that's really our true age. So two people who are, say, 67 or 70 can be living on Earth for different periods of time, but their true age, their biological age, the health of their tissues and organs could be vastly different. Um, and really, there's, there's many things that can influence our rate of aging from genes to lifestyle factors and to behaviors. Uh, aging is a malleable process inherently. And we know this because evolution in nature has shown us this over time. The bullhead whale can live 200 years. Uh, the, the Greenland shark can live up to 500 years. And contrast that to small rodents that live on average from two to three years long. So aging is a malleable process that nature and evolution modulates. That the question in geoscience is how does nature modulate uh, the aging of various organisms? And it turns out that there's these various biochemical knobs that nature can turn to make an organism live longer or shorter. And in the field of geoscience, we're trying to find out what are those knobs, how do we access them, and how do we turn those knobs to modulate our own aging? Okay, wow. All right, uh, just to change the, the, the mood a little bit, uh, I'm going to ask you a quick question. Quick question. Excluding your family, uh, somebody living or dead, somebody you, you wouldn't mind spending a day during the pandemic with? Yeah, well, that, that's definitely, uh, especially during the <laughs> Charles Darwin. It would have to be Darwin, okay. uh, who's, okay. <laughs> yeah, coming up with the concept okay. of evolution and natural selection. Just to pick his brain would be. Okay, okay. Uh, and um, real fast, I was going to play this, this long guessing game with you. I got something under my red hat that's relevant and pertinent, uh, especially uh, for you. Uh, you have two guesses what's underneath there. Mm -hmm. um, real fast, because you, we're always strapped for time here. Uh, but if you give up, I'll show you what's under my hat. <laughs> Is it a model of a brain? No. So uh, that's one. Do you have another one? Uh, a birthday cake. Uh, no. I have an NADA sublingual. Uh -oh. Beautiful. I thought you'd appreciate that. Uh, and that. and okay. folks out there can go look up NADH and, and you'll understand why that's there. Um, so um, we've got about uh, a minute and a half. Uh, real fast, um, is there anything uh, that I could do uh, to, to influence my rate of aging? I'm always looking. Absolutely. The answer is so We've got a minute and a half. Shoot. So there's lifestyle habits that we can change. So exercise, sleep, stress management, supplementation. And in terms of stress management, I could talk about any of these topics for hours, but in terms of stress management, it's controlling uh, chronic levels of stress that lead to this underlying uh, driver of aging called inflammaging. It's this chronic stress that seems to underlie many chronic illnesses that we face that I described uh, before. Um, and then there's uh, supplementation like NAD that you mentioned. Um, there's changing our environment. And then of course, there's uh, many of the emerging therapeutics that are out there, a lot of them showing promise uh, and that in the near future we'll be able to engage with. Yeah. Perfect. Well, um, there's so much more uh, and, and basically if folks they want you back, just email conversations with Calvin. Uh, we can go for hours. And, and before we went on air here, we were talking about uh, living forever uh, and transferring. And that, that'll be the topic for our next little part of it, our next little get together. I keep on going here. I got to watch our, our time. So we're down to just a, a few seconds. Um, this has been great. And we're going to do it again with other topics that will blow the mind and help the mind. And, and, and I just love LinkedIn because it brought us together. And of course I love Rutgers because that brought us together. So we're signing off. Um, uh, we'll be back, you and I. Perfect.